In the beginning, the Earth was nothing more than a molten ball which orbited the Sun. For millions of years, the Earth was cooled by enormous amounts of precipitation. Solidification and shifting created the mountains, and water collected in the lower areas to form the seas. Erosion by glaciers, water and wind began, as did decomposition, and life began to develop. The landscape began to be determined by the growing vegetation. In field and forest, living things of the most diverse kind began to develop. Man learnt to make use of plants and animals for his own benefit, because he had ceased to be nomadic. Wild animals became domesticated. Agriculture as we know it today was still a long way off. Without agricultural technology, this development was inconceivable. The landscape began to be marked by agricultural development. For many centuries, working the land meant sweat and toil. Drying and storing forage for the winter required much time and effort. far the most vital raw material and in many areas its use as a fuel was of the greatest importance. Houses, cattle stores, wagons and implements of all kinds were made from wood. became an indispensable aid to the farmer and represented the most important pulling power for many centuries. Man has known the plough for more than 3,000 years, first as a hook, then as a plough for turning the soil. It was built in different forms. Plough types and accessories were further developed to suit differing ground conditions. Man pulled the first ploughs himself until he was relieved of this heavy work by the horse or some other animal. Of all the natural resources available to him, water was the first one to be harnessed by man. farmer, cultivating the land remained the most strenuous part of his work. This too could not be accomplished without manual labour. Ploughing, carried out for more than 150 years with the iron plough, was limited by what man and horse could achieve. It still remained the most time-consuming of all farm work. was 
characterised by the small working widths of the horse-drawn implements. Hour by hour, horse and implement slowly work the field. Sewing was now done by seed drill instead of by hand. Fifteen to sixteen miles were covered on foot during a working day. On large farms where labourers were sometimes paid piecework wages, man and horse were often relieved after half a day. Towards evening, the farmer's wife was tired. Agricultural implements were built for the widest variety of tasks. Until the middle of this century, fertilizer top dressing was often still applied by hand, even though manure spreaders had been available for a long time. In the spring, mounds were built to produce charcoal. For thousands of years, the harvest was gathered in by hand. The only tools were sickle and scythe. They came in all shapes and forms and differed from country to country, from area to area. It was tedious work to cut the crop with a one-hand scythe and bind it by hand. Gathering the crop with the rake and putting it up was always strenuous manual labour. Until threshing time, the grain was stored in the barns or piled up in stacks. Only in winter did the farmer find time for threshing. For centuries, the capstan served as a simple drive for machines, at first made from wood, then later from iron. The capstan transferred the pulling movement of the horse into the turning movement of a drive shaft. The capstan freed man from dependence on water and wind power. Wind power was utilised mainly for grinding corn and pumping water. In 1769, James Watt invented the steam engine. A hundred years later, the first steam ploughs were moving in the fields. Names such as Fowler and Max Eit were closely connected with this stage of developing mechanization. Pulled by two locomobiles of 150 horsepower each, the balance plough achieved a daily coverage of 35 acres. Coal consumption was 400 kilos per day, and 317 gallons of water were used per hour. In 1876, Nikolaus August Otto blazed the trail with his invention of the four-stroke engine. However, it was to be many decades before a well-tried engine would be used in agriculture on a wide basis. Now, machines for harvesting underwent a faster development. The first one, a horse-drawn grass mower, appeared in 1860 and made mowing dramatically more efficient than with a scythe. It was also used for cutting grain. Around the turn of the century, Anton Albert at Far designed the first combination hay turner windrow rake. This introduced swathing into agriculture, a procedure which still determines the design of many agricultural machines today. In 1894, the first 
five and a half ton, 26 horsepower Otto gasoline tractor went into operation in the USA. From the glass mower, a reaper was developed, which cut and bundled the corn stalks, but didn't tie them. At the beginning of the century, it was the most common mower. The sheaves were tied by the busy hands of women and children. In 1907, the plough locomotive was developed in Germany. It developed 40 horsepower and had four-wheel drive with forward and reverse gears. The mower binder replaced the reaper at the turn of the century. It mowed and tied the sheaves in one operation. A special characteristic of all horse-drawn machines was the so-called ground drive. Here was a further attempt to replace the power of horses. Now appeared the three-ton, 25-horsepower automobile plough, using 52 gallons of fuel in 10 hours. Agriculture continued to be full of romanticism. The wedding, a festival for the entire village, began with the arrival of the bridal carriage. The movable trousseau, arranged on the wagon and decorated with flowers and ribbons, was taken to the farm, the new home of the bride. This tradition still survives. The first tractors, even with cabs, appeared on the agricultural scene in 1920. The diesel engine for tractors was first seen in Germany in 1924. Getting the MTH going in cold weather was hard work and sometimes not without danger. The MTH developed 14 horsepower, was cooled by an evaporator and had roller chain connection to the gears. This tractor was used not so much for pulling, but rather as a mobile unit to drive threshers, saws and other machines. It could transmit power only by way of the rear wheels or the belt pulley mounted on the crankshaft. At the end of the 1920s, two divergent trends of development in tractor design became noticeable. In 1929, tractors with permanently attached implements appeared. Only used for mowing, these could be considered to have been the first self-propelled working implements in agriculture. Other manufacturers produced tractors strictly of the pool type. The MTZ120 had an engine output of 27 horsepower. Fuses were inserted into the combustion chamber as a starting aid. And then the cranking began. The engine had two horizontal cylinders. With three forward gears and one reverse, its top speed was about four miles an hour. The MTZ was very popular for threshing because of its smoothly running engine. The MTZ tractor began to replace the locomobile. In 1934 came the breakthrough in agricultural motorization with two types of tractor. Deutz supplied the F2M 28 horsepower steel tractor.
design features were introduced. Unit manufacturing procedures, the upright inline engine with top speeds of about five miles an hour. The name, steel tractor, was used because the gearbox was made of welded steel, as doubts still existed about cast iron. Tractor equipment continued to improve, and now a locking brake appeared, as well as H gear changing, with three forward gears and one reverse. A PTO connection for mower binders and rope capstans, and belt pulleys. Even the most dangerous work was done with this tractor. The second tractor model was the Lance Bulldog. It had 32 horsepower and weighed three tons. Its hot bulb was started up with a heating lamp. This took three to four minutes. As soon as the hot bulb began to glow, the steering wheel was removed and used to start the engine. three years, power takeoff and belt fully. But also for smaller farms, technical development continued. Thus, in 1936, the first 11 horsepower farmer's tractor appeared. At times, it was simply put in front of implements intended to be drawn by horses. Here, once again, were further advances. The mower mounted next to the belt pulley in the PTO and air-filled tyres. This, the first small tractor in the world, outsold all others of its time. Later, during the war years, fuel became scarce. Agricultural tractors were converted to burn wood gas. Wood was ignited in the generator, and the glowing wood heated with a blower to the point where ignitable wood gas was generated. Then the tractor was ready to start work. After a relatively short time, hollows developed in the generator, and the wood had to be compacted with a rod. This provided an opportunity to refuel. First introduced in 1950, Tractors with air-cooled engines quickly gained in popularity. This Deutz 15 tractor was the basis for a whole series of tractors, all with air-cooled engines, built around a single air-cooled engine series. At the same time, the agricultural machine industry developed a variety of implements and machines tailored to each tractor according to its size. 1953 brought an additional improvement. The 30 series introduced the engine PTO with dual clutch, the so-called free float. The carrier tractor was popular in the 50s, but it did not fulfill expectations. Major implements were to be mounted at the centre of the tractor, and it was expected to become the ideal tractor for the one-man farm. However, the farmer preferred the standard tractor. This period marked the beginning of the appearance of the first and more effective 
self-propelled combines. Further development in agricultural mechanization became faster and more extensive. At the beginning of the 60s, the front loader gained in popularity. Hydraulic controls came to be generally used. New developments, such as the loading wagon, led to new work procedures. Other types of tractors were developed, such as the implement carrier. Because of its particular construction, however, it was unable to follow the trend of the standard tractor towards higher performance. For special applications, large implements were built, such as the trench plow, which was able to cultivate high moorland to a depth of six and a half feet. The following years were marked by tractors with higher engine output, additional gears, extra equipment, higher hydraulic performance, and better operator comfort. Comfort was also demanded in the 70s. Tractors with integral cabs were developed. Engine power now exceeded 100 horsepower, and all-wheel drive moved to the forefront. Agricultural technology progressed further, and new tractor concepts appeared on the market. In tract, a new generation of tractors. Tremendous power became available to the farmer. Deutz and Farr also developed other combines and machines to improve efficiency and output, gathering crops quicker and in bigger volumes, thus making the farming day a lot easier. uncluttered cab, excellent pulling power and PTO shaft performance with low noise emission levels and economy in operation. Present day agricultural technology offers new ways of farming that bring progress and success. <laughs> <laughs>